On January 25th, 2015, a brand new Twitter account was created under the name Roll Stuff. Little did anyone know that the owners of this Twitter account would go on to create one of the most popular games on Roblox. Now, despite the Twitter being made in 2015, the group was actually made in 2013. However, the game we're here to talk about was made on the 18th of August, 2015. Now, Roblox Arsenal is heavily inspired off the game CSGO, more specifically the arms race game mode in CSGO. In fact, there are a few maps in Arsenal that are also in CSGO, such as Agency, Cash and Dust2. Now, Arsenal went through many stages during the last eight years, and a lot of it has been archived on the Rolf group. Before I go any further, if you don't already know what Roblox Arsenal is, let me explain. Roblox Arsenal is the most popular FPS game on Roblox. It's known for its unique gameplay and customizations, such as characters, kill effects and gun skins. Now that everyone knows what game I'm talking about, let's begin. Oh my god! On its release date, Roblox Arsenal was originally called Gun Game. It was published on the 8th of August 2015, as I've already mentioned, however it wasn't open to the public until the 12th of September 2015. Many people took note of it as there wasn't a game quite like Gun Game. The game was very simple however, with a few unnamed maps, limited guns and only one skin you could use. In fact, you only need 13 kills to win a game, compared to the 33 kills needed to win today. Using the Arsenal wiki is very easy to find videos of Gun Game. With a steady flow of updates, Arsenal began to grow gradually, including updates such as the Purple Team update. Purple Team led to a lot of problems in the not so near future. On April 17th, 2016, the name of the game was finally changed from Gun Game to Arsenal Beta. Over the next couple of years, there were a few minor updates, however it wasn't until November 2018 where it all changed. On the 18th of November 2018, the Mega Update was released. The game engine had been changed to that of Typical Colors 2, which is another popular Rolf game. This made it much easier for the developers to release updates. Some other things that were added in this update include 23 new weapons, a new shop system, 10 new skins, and the map Big Kitchen. With more skins to grind for, more and more people began to play. There were even some small updates which changed the game a lot, such as the ability to return to the menu by pressing M, and the ability to get battle bucks by playing rounds. On December 23rd, 2018, the game finally became compatible for mobile devices, which meant a lot of new players. It was around this time that Arsenal began to really pop off, but by no means were the updates slowing down. On the 11th of January 2019, Rolf released an update known as the Brick Battle Update. This update introduced the Brick Battle game mode along with all the maps and weapons associated with it. Not only being a new game mode, this update brought with it 8 new skins, 1 new taunt, 3 announcers and 9 new kill effects. Item rarities also became a thing in this update. In the next month, some smaller updates were added, such as the VIP Game Pass being added on the 26th of January 2019. Along with this came the King and Queen skins, as well as the VIP kill effect. Roblox Arsenal also played a big part in the 2019 Roblox Egg Hunt, with the addition of two new weapons being the Admin Launcher and the Influencer Launcher. This also led to the game's first, but most definitely not last, boss fight. <laughs> Arsenal would even begin adding YouTuber voice announcers such as John Roblox and Flamingo. Ah, summertime is here. It's time to relax and have fun. Couldn't get any better, or could it? <laughs> oh yeah! The 2019 summer update was by far the biggest update Arsenal had up to this point. This introduced the addition of 11 new weapons including the Concussion Rifle and Coleco, and 3 new maps including Beach and Aircraft which are both still in the game to this day. There was also a new ticket system in which when a player dies they'll drop a ticket. Collect enough of these tickets you could spend it in the shop for items such as Summer Delinquent and the Shark Skin if you were really dedicated. Ah, uh, gamers, I want to buy a diamond product. I just got this in Arsenal, I'm like yeah, sure. Purchasing, okay, so I got admin or what? In September of 2019, Arsenal was hacked. When you joined the game, you'd be greeted with this admin game pass, which obviously didn't give you admin. Anyone who bought this game pass was later awarded the admin skin and ban hammer. 
funnily enough, the Game Pass is actually still for sale, so technically you can buy the admin skin. However, it will set you back about 100 million Robux. Okay, so in my last video, I've been asking for games to play because I don't really know what to play on Roblox anymore, and it looks like a lot of people have been asking me to play some Arsenal. On the 1st of November 2019, a YouTuber named Tanker made a video on Roblox Arsenal for the first time. Little did anyone know just how much of an influence this one YouTuber would make to the game. From this point onwards, there were three notable Arsenal YouTubers, Tanker, Bandites, and John Roblox. John Roblox has been making Arsenal videos for a while before Bandites began on the 6th of June 2019, with Tanker shortly to follow. At this point, the game was still fairly new, so there wasn't many YouTubers currently on the scene compared to today's standards. It wasn't long before all three of their channels began to grow rapidly. Tanker was known for his insane skill because at the time, it was unmatched. No one had ever seen such a consistent player, which is why a lot of people enjoyed his videos. Bandlight's content consisted of challenge videos, which made a very entertaining watch as well as being decent at the game as well. And John Roblox's content? Well. Look at this gun, and then look at this. As time went on, however, more and more YouTubers appeared, such as Chaser Rooney <laughs> and JJ Wake, who was also a moderator for the game. 2019 had some of Arsenal's biggest updates in, such as the Halloween update, which introduced over 40 new cosmetic items, including 28 new skins and the notorious Scythe Melee. Later on in the year was the Christmas update, which included an advent calendar on the countdown to Christmas. All you had to do was log in every day for 12 days and you could claim all the prizes on the Christmas tree, along with the final top prize at the top of the tree. Along with this update, over 20 new skins were added as well, along with multiple other cosmetic items. Everyone was loving Arsenal. This had to be the peak. 30,000 concurrent players at any given time? Can it get any better than that? Everything was closed. Schools were online, there was nothing to do, apart from maybe play some games. Ignoring the atrociously deafening music, this was my first Arsenal video. In fact, my channel was created two weeks before everything went into lockdown, along with many others having the same idea. This was it. This was the moment that every game developer had been waiting for. Everyone was stuck at home and many people turned to gaming. Within three months of everything locking down, Arsenal was averaging over 40,000 players a day. Hello and welcome to the uh, Game of the Year announcement. And the Bloxy for Game of the Year goes to... Arsenal. That's right, Arsenal was voted Game of the Year for 2019. This would massively boost the game, as well as just being a big achievement. Later on in the year, Robot had a code that would grant the player the Bloxy Delinquent and the Bloxy Melee. On the 22nd of May 2020, one skin was added that would impact the game to an extreme level. I have finally got into Mucky Business skin. Anyone can do it! And this was true. Anyone could do it. However, finding the steps to getting this badge was a near impossible task. Once you've been awarded the badge, you would be awarded the monkey skin as well. To say that people wanted this skin was an understatement. People were spending hours every day trying to find out how to get this skin and find out the steps needed. I've been streaming for the last three days, putting 16 hours into trying to do this badge, okay? In the end, no one managed to find the monkey skin without the assistance from Castlers. Like, there's Roblox. Who was one of the lead developers of Arsenal at the time. However, this won't be the last you hear of the monkey skin in this video. On the 12th of June 2020, Arsenal finally reached 1 billion visits. This is a monumental achievement for a Roblox game, with less than 100 games to ever reach this milestone. To commemorate the occasion, Rolf released the 1 billion visits update, which included 3 special kill effects, such as the cake, trapdoor and balloons. Despite it being a small update, many people still enjoyed it. Hey you! Summertime is finally here! On the 20th of June 2020, the annual summer update was released. This is known by many as the best update Arsenal has ever had to this day. This update introduced the first battle pass Arsenal had ever implemented to the game. The battle pass included items such as the wrench melee and new variants of already in-game skins. However, there was a catch to this, as to unlock half of the items, players would need to own either Robux Premium, pay 400 Robux, or pay 15,000 Battle Bugs. The devs were met with a lot of backlash for this decision, as it meant many people couldn't get a lot of the items. Pugger! Let's go! <laughs> In total, there were over 60 new cosmetic items added during this update. There were also some new maps, notable ones being Township, a beach revamp, and a sand revamp. 
Over time, as the Arsenal player base grew even more, a small community appeared known as the Comp Community. This scene in Arsenal was driven by players who enjoy a more organised and challenging style of play. This would involve Discord servers where players could find people with a similar skill level and take part in 1v1s, 2v2s or even 3v3s. There were even some massive tournaments that took place, such as Bandlux's is a 100k tournament. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my god, that And was Castlers and John win the 100k Robux G. These games are much more intense than the casual Arsenal game, and therefore they're not for everyone. In some cases they're known to be very toxic as well, but if you can handle that, it's quite a fun way to spend your time. On the 26th of October 2020, the annual Halloween update released. This introduced a game mode known as Hackula. The way this game mode was introduced was by a live event. This was the game's second ever boss fight, and despite what people say, the first time playing it was very challenging. However, after a few attempts, it became much easier. Once you beat the boss, you'd be awarded the Hackula skin in the game. All players who attended the live event were awarded a skin and unusual of their choice, which made a very nice touch. This very moment was the moment Arsenal peaked. It had over 70,000 concurrent players in one go. It would never surpass this moment again up to this day. The 2020 Christmas update was another good update, however it did mainly consist of cosmetic items. Nonetheless, some of the cosmetic items were very cool. Similar to the 2019 Christmas update, there was an advent calendar leading up to Christmas Day. If you logged in every single day, you would receive items such as the Toy Soldier skin, and on day 25, you would receive the Krampus skin, Coal Scythe, and Holiday Fire. This was the first scythe added to the game since Halloween of 2019. It was a very nice melee. Another nice melee in this update was the Glacier Blade. This became very popular not long after the Christmas update. With a successful previous year, 2021 looked very good for Arsenal. Right? 2021 was notorious for codes. For example, on January 12, 2021, a code was added that would give the user Festive Fantina and Gastel skins. This hype for codes would eventually spiral out of control as the year went on. On the 3rd of February, an update was released that many people would enjoy. This was known as the Slaughter Update. To sum it up, this event added a horror aspect to Arsenal. You had to go into an old restaurant picking up timber and gas, all while trying to avoid getting jump scared. No, dude! No, dude! No! Ah, well, we tried, guys. We tried. We tried. Hello. You're right there. <laughs> this ignited many people's passions for the game again. There was five nights to complete, each with an increasing difficulty, but each with a better reward. The final night would award you the Slaughter Delinquent. Some of the devs are experiencing some burnout in relation to Arsenal and will be taking a break for the next few months so there won't be many updates planned until next summer update. This does not mean we're done working on the game, it's just a break. This was a disappointing start to the year, however the devs are people too and everyone needs a break. And they did mention how this year's summer update would include things like custom game modes, stage builders and more new game modes. It's only 5 months away. On the 16th of March 2021, the Prime Gaming Update released. This update was sponsored by Amazon Prime Gaming. If you had an Amazon Prime subscription, you were able to redeem the Techhead skin, which looked like this. There was also a new map added known as Brickland. On the 1st of April 2021, everyone had access to Purple Team for April Fools, and it was quite funny. The Monkey Skin and Delinquent with No Brim also appeared on sale. There was also a tournament on the 24th of April hosted by Bandites in which creators would go against each other. There was also a code for the brand new delinquent known as the AC Linquid. That's my piece up there. Oh, I did. And they oh, did. Oh, wow. In the end, the winner of the tournament was awarded 100,000 Robux and a custom knife for Arsenal. The monkey business badge was back. Could this mean the monkey skin was back? Over the course of the next few days, bananas were spotted on Sandtown, Dizzy and Beach. What could this mean? It wouldn't be long until we found out. A counter on the side of the screen appeared not long after the bananas. It was counted the total number of bananas that you had collected. There were many theories ranging from collecting 100,000 bananas to get the monkey skin or it just being one big joke. However, Zone, the man behind the chaos, did a minor amount of trolling. At the time, if you collected enough bananas, might I say an impossible amount of bananas, you would be awarded the monkey skin with a small banana unusual. However, it was physically impossible to get this many bananas, which means anyone who did get this skin had hacked. 
This resulted in many people being banned, all because they wanted some pixels on a screen. Was it worth it? Mmm, nah, probably not. A few days later, a strange tweet was added by Midnight Crystal to Twitter, and all it said was broke. However, this was actually a one copy code for the skin Seg with Drip. To this day, we still don't know who got this skin. Not long after this, we finally understood why we were collecting bananas. A banana shop was released where you were able to buy a monkey skin, not the monkey skin, a brand new banana melee and a little banana unusual as well. Around this time, a player known as Fusion Boys reached level 1000, which is absolutely mental as no one had ever done this before. There was a point where the devs were adding new codes every week, which was good and bad in many ways. Lots of people would complain if they didn't get a skin as they were sleeping, as these codes were usually limited to about 2,000 copies. Ah, summertime is here. It's time to run. On the 6th of July 2023, the long-anticipated summer update was released. This was the first major update since the devs had announced they were taking a break. With the promise of more game modes, stage builders, and the new Orange team for content creators, lots of people have been waiting for this. For starters, Orange team was a team specifically added for content creators to save the devs having to trust them with Purple team. With this team, you were able to kick people from the game and give out the content creator gun skin. Vote kicking was also added in this update, however, it wasn't long until that was completely removed for valid reasons. A new game mode was also added known as competitive, which meant changing the old competitive to legacy competitive. Well, I'm trying to show what it is, but I'm the only person in it right now, so yeah. This new game mode was a 1v1 ELO type game mode with the intention of being able to 1v1 someone with a similar skill level. Normally, it would match with a person who has a similar ELO, making it as fair as possible. In this update, we were promised things like stage builders and custom game modes, which we didn't get. However, we did get hard mode. Oh my god. No! Right, we're back to one kill. Right here. No! Now, as much fun as hard mode was, I think stage builders and custom maps would have been better. Just my opinion, though. This update did come with 13 new skins, including the legendary buff battle. There was also a skin added known as the Tomfoolery Delinquent, however, I'll talk more about that later. Overall, this update was a bit disappointing, given all the stuff we were promised. But not to worry, as a few weeks later, the devs would have released the Arsenal Care Package, which consisted of 12 new skins in a wheel. There wasn't many updates for a few months until the 31st of October, when the Halloween update was released. This saw the comeback of Hackula, along with a new and harder version of it known as Hackula DX. This update brought a similar wheel with 12 skins, one of them being the Hollow Haunter. This was by far the rarest obtainable skin added to this day, with a probability of 1 in 10,000 chance of getting it. That is the same as 0.01%. This update also introduced career pages and calling cards, which the game didn't have up until this point. There was a lot more planned for this update, however due to Roblox going down for about 3 days, this content never got released, which was a shame as many teasers for it had been released. That's brilliant. On the 3rd of November 2021, Zone had a few codes around three maps, and whoever found these codes would be awarded at the time a dev skin. Fluffy Misty and I were lucky enough to find one of these codes on Assault, and once redeemed, awarded us the Tomfoolery Delinquent. At this time, about 10 people had the skin, but it wouldn't be long before that would change. As the Christmas season rolled around once more, as did the 2021 Christmas update. This, like many other years, consisted of an advent calendar, however instead of 12 days, it was extended to 25. This update also brought back many Christmas maps. This was the very moment Zone made the tomfoolery delinquent public, which means my dev skin privileges were gone. It was fun while it lasted. On the 20th of December 2021, exactly two years ago today as of recording, the Winter Update Part 2 was released. This included some minor but very cool changes such as custom hit and kill sounds and victory themes. In this update there was a small hunt for presents and anyone who collected them all would be awarded a skin bundle just a few weeks later. There was also a small easter egg in which if you accept someone's gift from an emote there's a 1 in 100 chance of you both receiving the Mimic skin. I got it! Overall, quite a cool update. A lot happened in the space of a short period, as just a few days before Christmas, there was a hunt for some melees. At the time, these melees were dev exclusive, so many people wanted them, and they only had a few copies each. This was very much first come, first serve. 
To obtain these melees, you would have to shoot a small block hidden somewhere on a map. Each map would have a different sword. This this was peak Arsenal gaming, I won't lie. On the run-up to New Year, a small countdown was added in Arsenal. If you joined the game 10 minutes before midnight and were there when the clock struck 12, you would be awarded a special unusual on the skin you had equipped. Now, I won't lie, 2022 was not Arsenal's strongest year. However, there were some fairly influential updates. On January 6th, the first stage of the Knight's Edge event was revealed. The player would need to input the code WAKE UP into the code system. This would teleport you to a snowy map. Once you reached this point, there wasn't much left to do apart from wait. A few weeks later, on the 26th of January, the second stage was released. The code WAKE UP no longer worked and instead the player had to input their Roblox ID backwards. This would open up the event. This time you would need to enter the mineshaft and shoot the red block at the end. Once everything was done, input a colour code and you're in. Once into the event, the player would have access to the portal kill effect and the Milo Unusual. That same day, it was revealed that you could obtain the Moai Melee, which could be found in the Grass Maze. This then led to the discovery that you could get every single Dev Sword you missed out on getting just a month prior. Within one week, most people had all of the Dev Swords. Over the next few months, there were few updates. There were events such as the one on Valentine's Day which released a new Dominus bundle as well as the St. Patrick's Day update and the April Fool's update. On the 15th of April, Zone and Blue A appeared on a Prime Gaming livestream where they discussed the future of Arsenal and how there may be a major rescript known as Arsenal Reloaded. It wouldn't be long before we found out more about this. A notable update was the Monkey with Drip event. Zone announced a code which would give the player a delinquent with a banana unusual. Equipping this skin and following a hidden trail on Street Corner would allow the player to unlock a team coloured Monkey with Drip skin. Does it have to be any game? Can it be any game? I got it! Let's go! Let's go! I got it! Guys, we've done it! We've got the monkey with drips. Alpha testing for Arsenal Reloaded begins now. Play here. This year did lack a summer update. However, a few months later, on the 15th of October, Arsenal Reloaded Alpha testing begun. The devs spoke about wanting to revamp the game entirely, and this new game displayed the hard work they've been putting in. Everyone should be excited about this, surely? Yeah, people people were not the biggest fan of this. And I think one of the main reasons why people disliked this is because it felt like an entirely new game. Don't get me wrong, Arsenal Reloaded was very impressive and shows just how skilled the devs are. However, it just didn't feel like Arsenal anymore. There was a lot of hype built for this and people felt as though it didn't live up to what was expected as well. On the 13th of December 2022, it was discovered that if you put in the code FATE into the code system, you would be brought to a place with no weapons and no menu. There wasn't much to do in this game apart from walk around, however it was shortly discovered that there was a code system in this game. There was one code that you could put in which would appear to do nothing, however once you begin to look around, you would eventually find a cube with a number attached to it. Clicking E on this cube would quickly teleport you back to normal arsenal. A small event took place on the 15th of December 2022 for RB Battles. There was a new time trial game mode in which the player had to aim to get a time under 1 minute to get the badge. This would become very competitive however with people striving to get even sub 20 second times. It's Christmas once more which meant the Arsenal Winterfest released. This update consisted of a few new skins, maps and melees. It was an okay update, but it was merely cosmetics, meaning there was nothing game-changing about it. Most people were happy with it though. On the 20th of December, there was a new discovery with the Fate event, or should I say, Knight's Edge event. You were now able to access a new tunnel in the Knight's Edge event, and using the code from the cube in the Fate map, it would take you to a boss fight. Beating this boss would grant the player the Knight's Edge melee. There would also be a much harder boss a few days later that would grant the player when day breaks melee if defeated. <laughs> 
2023 brought with it a few updates, such as the 2023 Valentine's event and once again the 2023 St. Patrick's Day event, which were almost identical updates to the previous year. However, on the 10th of March, the Arsenal Retro Palooza update released. This update brought back the Brick Battle game mode and all the maps associated with it, along with 13 new skins. One of these skins was very tricky to obtain and required a lot of grinding to get, however it was a very nice skin. It did take a while for people to find out how to get this skin, but once it was found, many people managed to get it. At the end of March, there was a couple of small events, such as a coffee event, which involved shooting coffee cups. Doing this would result in the player being ordered a small coffee cup melee. Around the same time, there was also a citrus event, which was very, very similar to the coffee one, and instead of shooting coffee cups, you would be shooting fruit. Completing this would award the player a fruit kill effect. Two very cool events. This year had another April Fool's event with lots of unbelievably rare skins for sale, including the not so rare anymore Tomfoolery Delinquent. A few weeks later, the Delinquent the School was released as it is normally every year. Not worth it. This year brought with it a very cool Easter update, with the player having to collect eggs around Arsenal. Each egg would hatch into a new skin or cosmetic, which was a very nice addition to the game. There were 11 new skins added, including the special Easter Dominus skin known as the Spirit of Spring. Part 2 of this event brought 5 item kits, which were new to the game at the time. Besides from a few questionable updates, there wasn't anything major until the 23rd of June when the update of all time released. This update brought with it 12 new skins, a few updated maps, and the return of Clown Infection. No devs ever stated that this was the summer update, however many people believed that it was. On the 28th of October, the Fright in the Night update was released. This year's Halloween update brought with it a brand new shop system with a lot of new cosmetics. There was even an event where the first 1500 people to complete it would be awarded a limited time UGC item. To buy things from the shop you would need to collect molars, which could be obtained by killing people or doing contracts. This was a very successful update that people enjoyed. December rolled around once more which brought this year's Christmas update. Similar to previous years there was an advent calendar which consisted of a few new skins and other cosmetics along with some Christmas edition reskinned maps. Very similar to other years in terms of updates, however the things that were added were very cool. Two thousand and twenty four has had an incredibly strong start with the addition of the new Galactic Assault update. This update, in case you already didn't know, introduced a battle pass like system which included twelve new skins and lots more cosmetics. In this update, laser tag returned as well as the addition of snipers only. These sort of updates are very good for the game as it's not just cosmetics. There's now something to actually grind for. There are also three new maps and one old map that has just been reintroduced. There's been a significant amount added in this update with me only naming a few, and at this pace roll the set for a very strong two thousand and twenty four. Could this be the year that Arsenal returns to its former glory? We'll have to wait and see. Nice, nice down by truth, there we go. Last 1v1 you. Yeah, for sure. Hey, nice fall, dude. Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> To see how many levels we can rank up within the one hour. Arsenal! Wow! I'm gonna be better than everyone. I'm gonna buy the most expensive item. There it is. Oh, oh I can make a 10 minute video about why I got back! Things changed, that was. <gasps> <laughs> Guys, we've done it. We've got the monkey we with drips. Are we done it? Are we done it? Are we done it? Are we done it? Yes! Is he still protecting the BB even though I didn't join my main? I am so. Dude. Oh my god, I actually just got banned for A button! <laughs> Bandai's playing Arsenal in 2023, question mark? Oh! Oh! Thank you! Thank you! Yo, how did you get those sick shades? No way! No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah
Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>